Justin Walter is a businessman. I don't know much about him. I have found a, a YouTube video and he is bragging about his accomplishments. I'm not for sure what his policies are or um, his leadership strengths. The Mr. Tom Rechtenwald serves as the executive vice president of SVS. So he's like a general manager, stored valued systems, incorporating some sort of finance expert or some shit. I don't know. Mr. Tom Rechtenwald serves as the executive vice president and managing director. SVS International Com Data Network Incorporated. He joined Com Data Network in 1999. Mr. Rechtenwald received a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Louisville. The Senate campaign is beginning to ramp up. Republican Mitch McConnell and Democrat Allison Lundergan Grimes are busy soliciting money, which leaves them little time to be concerned with us average, everyday Kentuckians. And Tom Rechtenwald has vowed he will not accept one penny of donations for this. He is bought by no person. He will be, you know, stick for his ideas. He'll be his own man. He'll be independent. Um, so, uh, if you're not registered to vote, you got to be registered by April 21st. Register as a Democrat so you can vote for Tom Rechtenwald. Um, and then he says once he wins the primary, then he's going to take on Mitch in November, assuming Mitch is the one who wins the Republican primary. Uh, Tom Rechtenwald is, lives on 2717 B. Knock Avenue, zip code 40216. So he's from Louisville. He reminds me of Fred Tuttle. Fred Tuttle was able to win the Senate seat in Vermont just by staying in his own house and giving interviews to anybody that would come up and want an interview. So he would um, just basically just talking to folks, saying, here's what I would like, here's the things that's going on, and the people would hear his ideas and shit. So he didn't have to go shaking hands, and, uh, kissing babies, and petting fucking ugly-ass fucking pets and shit, right? Pretending, oh, yeah, it's a nice fucking slobbering fucking, you know, iguana. I went back up in 1992 and I spoke there again, representing the rank and file employees. I was very proud to receive this letter of appreciation from the president of my local union, Local Lodge 830. Some excerpts. It says, Tom, since you returned from Washington, I've been deluged with comments from others who were there, both union and management, anxious to tell of the outstanding job you did. On behalf of your union brothers and sisters, I wish to commend and thank you for a job well done. Very proud of that one. 1993, it happened again. Once again, another breakfast. After that one, after I spoke, got this note from Congressman Ron Mazzoli. Tom, you continue to impress me with your ability to say a lot in a few words and to select those few words carefully for maximum effect. I was wowed by that one. That same year, our, our commanding officer, Dick Gilbert, the top man at that station, issued this six-page email talking about the last breakfast. He goes on and on with a lot of praise. He says, there is no way I could possibly recognize individuals since almost everyone was involved. But if you go back a couple of pages, he says, the one individual from the station that... So now we're going to get to Allison Lundergan Grimes, right? So what does Allison Lundergan Grimes, right now she, what does she stand for? Right now she's our Secretary of State in Kentucky. But she's being run like Obama's run, a blank slate, right? Here's general vague notions of the different issues that she believes in, nothing concrete, nothing specific, and we're not going to say anything controversial and just uh, let the people put whatever face on Allison Lundergan Grimes that they want to, uh, regardless of her actual... Uh, belief system. Well, I don't think that's a good idea because, you know, as he, Obama will only be as progressive as he promises. He will not go any farther. So if he, if Alison Lundergan Grimes isn't promising us the progressive values that she should be promising us, then we'll never get those ideas. We'll never get them. People say, oh, well, you're going to lose. No, you're going to lose if you don't stand up for what's right, okay? You need to start standing up for what's right. You need to stand up against the NSA, the war machine, um, the war on drugs, uh, there's a whole host of issues. We know she's going to fight for women's rights, but what about young men's rights? So, as young males, are they going to be 
I mean, we're flooding prisons more. We're dying in war and battlefields. There, you know, let's make sure everybody's being taken care of, right? So uh, the reason why I mentioned the sexual divide, I don't know if women have the same fear of cops just punching them randomly for no apparent reason. That's that's something, you know, if you get into a fight with a woman, you hope she has a boyfriend there so you can punch the boyfriend, right? Because you're not allowed to, to hit a woman. And when you have that unaccountability, they can act as crazy as they want to act. And um, and that's, you know, that's our society. It is what it is. You have to just kind of live with that. Alison Lundergan Grimes, she's like a princess too, right? She's being like escorted up into her um, into her, her SUV and shit or her husband would. But, I mean, if I was her man, I would probably... Um, treat her not only like a queen, but I'd make everybody else treat her like a queen too. So, um, you know, it's it's partly the men's fault, definitely. You know, clearly, just by what I said. But the point being is that whereas a female could say and do whatever they want, and I would never do anything to them. If the boyfriend was there, it's like, oh, just say something. You know, just say something I don't like, and then I'd be like, well, he called me a son of a bitch. I had to hit him. What do you mean? And he called me a son of a bitch. Um, so the. Uh, uh, there is a, a, especially our education system, 99% is white women in our education system. And white women would get black men lynched when they would lie about them being raped by them when actually the white woman was raping the black man. So we're all human, right? We're all, uh, we all have our equal rights and we all have our uh, human rights. And I think that should just be protected by everybody. I'm just saying don't forget the men, okay? Don't forget about the men, Alison Lundergan Grimes. Um... The war, the Patriot Act, police brutality, prisons, these are uh, big issues that are uh, militarism, militarized, fascism, um, and they target mostly men. So, is it unjustified? I don't know, you know, like, they do target young men, but young men are more likely to commit violent crimes, so where is the give and take? I think there is a give and take. I think, you know, go after the bad guys and go after the people that are doing wrong, but people that aren't doing wrong. Quit fucking their lives up. Over half the people in prisons are there for a non-violent offense. And then it's not just, um, it's not just men. Mostly men are in there. You're, the women are getting screwed over too. I mean, they're probably getting screwed over worse. They're probably, like, getting, you know, I don't know. There's they, People laugh about male rape in prisons and stuff, but I'm sure women are getting raped too when they go to prison. The few who do eventually do something heinous enough that they need to be locked up. They, you know, they're not in a safe spot. So, um, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. And that's, uh, you know, we need to, that's why we need to care about everybody. You know, it's, it's bad for anybody to be punched. It's bad for anybody to be shot or robbed or raped. Everybody should be, uh, enjoying the same privileges as anybody else. So, uh, speak up for the women's equality rights. Speak up against Williams, uh, women's uh, um, violence, the violence in the um, the home and the workplace. Make sure you speak up against that and against domestic violence, against rape, uh, against um, you know uh, abortion attempts, abortion revocation attempts. Keep Roe versus Wade. Keep everything that you're talking about. Everything that I, uh, you're talking about with uh, I'm a feminist. So I believe in equality. I'm just saying, don't forget about the men. Sorry for that whole rant there, but anyways, um, okay. So she's a blank slate, uh, blank slate candidate, and he will only be as promise, uh, progressive as he promises. Not it's more so the same thing with Allison Lundergan Grimes. As a she's a business attorney, so she's taking all this money from attorneys and from these uh, trust funds. She's taking money from labor too, but she's a business attorney, so automatically she's an attorney for corporations. She's on the wrong side. She's not. Like William Justice Goebel, who you know was our governor, who was fighting for the working class people, um, but she's a business attorney, so she's fighting against mom and pa shops. Uh, she says on her website she helped businesses open, expand, and thrive, so she's been able to uh, create jobs, foster economic growth. She specifically worked in the Salvation Army, hospitals, and food banks, so she's given back. She's volunteered. Her heart's in the right spot. 2011, she was elected Kentucky State. Uh, Secretary of State, and she bragged about being the youngest woman uh, uh, Secretary of State in the entire country. So that's a big thing, right? That's a distinction that only she has. Um, uh, she served as Chief Business Officer, Chief Election Official, and Chief Advocate for Civic Engagement. Grimes is an outspoken advocate for women's rights issues, including gendered income inequality, sexual and domestic violence, and abortion rights. She's a form supporter of increase in the minimum wage to $10.10. 10 
Now, Bill Grimes or Bill Clinton and Allison Lundergan Grimes were talking about the middle class at this meeting recently with Bill Clinton that he had. Um, but uh, again, are they going to pass the poor over? You're not going to talk about the poor. You're just going to talk about all the middle class, and that's it. Middle class are the voters, strategically, pragmatically. Maybe you should only talk about it, but I believe in sort of John Edwards' philosophy is that there are people who actually care about the poor. So there's middle class people who care about the poor, and that would be, um, well, I'm not middle class, but if I was middle class, I'd care about the poor. But my idea would be, my thinking would be is since um, there's the rich and there's the working class, and the poor would be part of the working class, right, even if they're like less than the working class. But I've actually heard 44% of homeless people have a job, so they're working poor, so they're all working class, right? Um, but if you can care about the least among us, then you'll care about me. So if you care about, you know, the most vulnerable, the, you know, I don't know, the, the poor, the handicapped, the, anybody that has a disability, anybody that's in a vulnerable position, if you show that you give it animals, if you have, you care about animals, that shows me that if you care about, you know, everybody, then you, you know, you would care about me too. So I think you shouldn't just talk about the middle class, you should also mention the poor. Mitt Romney and Obama forgot to mention about the poor during all their debates. So, um, you know, there, there's also, like, who are you helping? If you ain't willing to help the most willing or the most vulnerable, who will you help? If you ain't going to help, like, a fucking kitten, you know, struggling across the street, would you help some rich fucking tycoon? You know, will you help the millionaires and the corporations and King Cole and Papa John's? Um, you know, will you help Papa John's? Will you help uh, King Cole out of uh, Oklahoma? Will you help a uh, uh, motherfucking... Let's say got Donald Trump. Is that who you're going to help? Fucking Donald Trump. So, the um, Democrat Greg Lichty, who can't get Allison Lundergan Grimes to debate, he's taken the challenge on her to talk on issues on Twitter. Independent Egg Marksberry doesn't agree with either of the front runners on much of anything. Greg Lichty should rail against Lundergan Grimes for not wanting to debate him. She wants to steal the Democratic mantle without any challenge, without having to show any of her progressive credentials, if she has any. As progressive, we should not allow her to get away with this. Let's put as much flavor and human and personality into Allison Lundergan Grimes as we can. Um, I totally feel for Ashley Judd. I think she would have been scary, didn't know what was going on, you know, have to tell people what to do and shit. And so it would all been new experiences, but it's new experiences for anybody. And uh, Huey Long, when he was elected, he just bust in into the middle of Capitol. And he's like, hey, everybody, I'm here. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? You know, and basically just took the show over. I'm the fucking man. That's how it's going to be. I'm loud. I'm proud. And I'm going to try to wheel and deal. And I'm going to get some things done around here. And, um, and I think that's a good way to be, to not make a mockery of yourself, but to make a spectacle of yourself so that way you sort of increase your appeal. You let people know that you're around. You're not afraid to speak up. And, um, and yeah, so those are all good things. That's how Ashley Judd could have gone in there. Allison Lundergan Grimes does seem like she's more politically savvy and perhaps more headstrong and firm. Like, this is how things are going to be. She's, she can more easily converted into a fascist controller, right? <laughs> and if you have to have a, a political machine, you sort of have to have, you know, the boss, right? Um, but, but, but... The, uh, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's sort of bullshit that, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The, being a corporate lawyer, she's a, for, a lawyer for business, um, can she, you know, did she come across the anti-corporation constitution? Allison Lundergan Grimes, did she pay attention that the constitution of Kentucky in 1891, the 1891 constitution, which is the one in effect to the, today, was very anti-corporate through and through. Much of that document has been gutted out. What are we going to do about this document? It's The fucking document is just absolutely gutted. It's like, it is messed up. Regulations are forcing farmers to take care of the Mexicans. And then someone asked if she cared about Adam and Eve and Adam and Steve. These are the fucking dumb shit. We're not going to pander to motherfuckers. What, you, it's, farmers are allowed to beat the shit out of their Mexicans? They're people too. You're allowed to, you know, they're getting cheap labor. They're probably fucking illegal. So you're actually supporting, you know, illegal immigration when you defend the farmers who's being shitty to their Mexicans. Um, but they should be treating them right. They're people too. They're humans. You should not be like, you know, that's, that's when, that's why illegal immigration is such a bad thing because you get illegal immigrants here and they're having a force to do what shitty people tell them to do or else they'll be fucking deported. Um, 
And so that's not right. That's you know, uh, of course you should treat the Mexicans okay. And who gives a shit if it's Adam and Steve or uh, Marcy and Alice? Who gives a shit? Okay, it's 2014. If you want to be gay, that's your own private thing. Do it. You know, libertarian. It's supposed to be a free country, and you're supposed to have a right to do whatever you want with your own body, and especially in the privacy, uh, consenting adults in the privacy of your own home. Of course, um, she's got endorsed by the AFL-CIO, Allison Lundergan Grimes told the Madisonville Messenger she wouldn't be running for any leadership position, so she's not even going to be a spectacle like Huey Long. So is she going to get, you know, she's not going to get any leadership position. I guess she can't uh, brag about it or say that she's going to do it beforehand so she can surprise them with it, but she's going to have to do something. You know, when she gets in there, you can't, you're just going to be a junior senator under fucking Rand Paul. you got to be your own woman. You're going to be one of the freshest, you know, there's not many women in the Senate, so you're going to be one of the freshest faces there, and I think you should take it over just like you took um, sort of this this campaign over.